So maybe it's my turn to start the podcast and put on my podcasting voice. Which is actually your regular voice, just talking into a mic. Well, to, to be fair, the starting of it, it's like, welcome! You know? But yeah, that is a little bit in, different, I guess. And then, it, and then it eventually peters out. It's like, hey, Trey. And then I'm like, so, hey, I'm also recording, so this can be the start. What's up, everyone? This can be the start. So we're going to start it with this? This is it? That was, that was it. <laughs> All right. I was going to let that be a pregnant pause until you started talking again. You know, right. I've learned your tricks, <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and cut off that pause ASAP. That's a really good idea. It's episode 33. Video games are hard. The show where two semi-washed up speedrunners talk about what's going on in their life a little bit with gaming. And we periodically interview a random guy that A runs. random, fairly famous Smash guy last week. Yeah, that was fun. I, I thought that was good. That went a lot better than I thought it would. I, I thought it was like top three podcasts we've done, and we've only done like 32. Yeah, only 32. That's nothing. I don't know what my other top three would be. I like the Quaniza one a lot, and then I, I liked the, the Goron Fluff one. I like I those would, two. I would for sure say the Quaniza one, one of the most underrated. Not sure it's one of my favorites, though. I, you know what? I, I liked it. I thought it was fun. But, it was a good Pokemon discussion with the Pokemon master himself. Speaking of being washed up speedrunners, I was DM'd today by Yernal Michael asking me if I was going to uh, actually play SMS this month because the stocks are still a thing. Yep. And uh, I said I said my patented just, uh, you know? <laughs> that is your I patented. Did, it's I like, did, hey, Sid, time to record. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just say, uh, a lot. When I don't want to, want to actually answer with a no or a yes or a I'll be right there or I'm currently doing something else or anything like that, I just go like, uh, you know? And now so I've, I did, I've already caught on, but other people don't know that. So I did the patented, uh. And he responded with, understood. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I didn't know what that meant, so I was just like, well, now that you say understood, you I'll probably end up... You know what understood means? Well, no, I know what understood <laughs> meant, but I don't, I don't know what he meant by understood, you know? I think it just means understood, not going to invest in you. Uh, does it? I don't know. Maybe it's you're overthinking it. I, okay. Well, I told him that I would probably end up playing. So oh, you did? Like, okay. Wait, did I even yeah. listen to you? I, I just assumed you'd say no. No, well, uh, you, you know, okay, see, this, I have this weird part of my brain where I'm just like, don't invest in me, like, there's no reason to, and then, like, a week later, I'm like, fuck the haters, I'm gonna play SMS, you know? There's a weird part of you where you seem to do the opposite of what you say you're gonna do. Yeah. Like, oh, short Mario Maker stream, 12-hour stream. Yeah, that's genuine, that's generally how it goes. So, I... I told him, you know what, I might end up playing. So now, because I sent that one four sentence DM, I might not play. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Your old mic might have ruined any investors in you if they were going to invest in you. Yeah, because that's ex well, that's how the months have gone. The first month, it was just I was just like, don't invest in me. I played. I didn't end up PBing, but I played. And yeah. then the second month, people were just that had more investors. I haven't played. And then now it's the third month. Who knows what I'll do. I haven't played at all since this whole thing started, so it's actually been two months at least since I've done any runs. Pretty crazy to think about. This Super Mario Sunshine is definitely on the back burner. But you late. know who PB'd in the final moments of month two of the stock market is my boy JJSRL. It, oh, it was it was him. What'd you say? I said I was gonna I was gonna do the who was it Trey, you know? And then I just cut you off immediately. Yeah, that's fine. But that's dope because I actually, I'm doing the Hail Mary all in on JJ essentially, or as much as I can, because for month two, the the cap on investment was like up to $500, which is oh. roughly half your starting money. Yeah. So I did as many as I could on JJ, which was like six stocks. I'm still not doing like crazy good in the stock market. I think I'm like maybe 15th place or so. But I'm sucking. Basically, I'm going to stick with JJ, invest up to $700, which is the cap <laughs> on one person for month three. And if he gets a 113, then we'll see what happens. For anybody that doesn't know, this is not real money. This, this is, is fake, all money, fake money. But, you know, 
And uh, it's all it's all like specifically Super Mario Sunshine insider information, like with the runners. It's a weird in thing that we've been talking about. We've talked about a few podcasts, but Trey's Trey's doing well. Tarek's winning still, I think. I would probably diversify my for my portfolio a little bit more if it was real money, be a little bit safer. Yeah. But uh it's fake money, so I'm just doing you know what? All in JJ, all in uh JP pal, because he said he would play. Ouija, Ouija, to to summer or not summarize to end the stock conversation. I think uh, Ouija tweeted out today that he was just not interested in playing and he's going to fall down the anime rabbit hole. So oh, hell yeah, I'm. I guess I have to sell all my Ouija stocks. I think. I think that's what that. Means. I think you have to say understood selling all my Ouija stocks. Yeah, understood. <laughs> <laughs> understood, Ouija. Yeah, so I'll, I'll sell all those, but. To, to parlay off of speedrunning Super Mario Sunshine and how we're both washed up. Uh, this past week, not not you, but I did an OOT glitchless race with mm-hmm. Kwaniza and Kathalon. Which, by the way, was, by the way, is you may have noticed we didn't talk about it for the first five minutes, but uh, I'm doing a new layout change for this podcast, at least for this episode. Just wanted to you know mix it up a little bit. I got tired of the same old static image, change the color background, change the guest who's on it. And we're going to just show random gameplay footage during the thing. See, me personally, when I uh, indulge in a podcast, I, I don't typically watch anything on it. I just listen to it. But I know there are some people who like to have sort of a little video to watch, either of maybe face cams or something. So I was like, you know, random gameplay footage, try it out. Uh, and this is actually from that glitchless race that's talking about. I really hope that a lot of it is just Water Temple. Actually, okay, <laughs> if there was a portion to show, which portion should I show? I, I, I don't know. Water Temple sucked. What if, dude, what if the uh, entire thing is just the entire Water Temple? Dude, it was an hour and a half split. That might be like so, the perfect length, to be honest. It, it, like, from the end of Fire Temple, Ice Cavern, getting lost in Water Temple... And finishing Water Temple. So I hope you all enjoy this Water Temple footage, everyone. Yeah, Water <laughs> Temple is so fun. It's great. What if I just like, but, put on Forest Temple instead? <laughs> dude, we, we had so many discussions about the temples after we finished the OOT. Anyway, we, we did the race. I won. It was me versus Calf versus uh, Kwaniza. And I ended up winning. Quan was fairly confident going in. It, it, it was a really... We had it set up for like two weeks going into it. We we were just trying to figure out a day that we could dedicate potentially sixteen hours to a run. We we didn't know how long it was going to take. We had we haven't played the game casually in a while, and especially glitchless. Like Calf's done. Uh, is it no? I am wrong warp. Is that what it was? Um, something with a no wrong warp might have been no. I am no wrong warp. Something like that. It was a relatively so he's done that category uh, before. not too popular category. Yeah, so so Calf has done that category before, but he's never actually casually played through the game. <laughs> so Which that's is crazy. To I me. think that was, I think that's a pretty funny thing where he's just like, yeah, I'll blind race it, blind li- race it, glitch glitchless. I've speed run it in this with glitches before, but you know what? I'm just gonna jump in it with you guys and just g- go as casually as I can because I've never done it before. And Quan and I both played it when we were kids a lot. And Dude, I couldn't imagine speedrunning a game before casually playing it uh we complain about it a lot but considering oot has been I, I i'll give calf a pass for it because it just made the glitchless race, race that much more interesting <laughs> if by and, interesting you mean just calf falling way behind you guys yeah <laughs> well see we complain about like luigi's mansion 3 weekend of doing speed runs and stuff but like oot has been out for what 22 years at this point when did it come and out was it 98 it was 98 right okay i don't I remember it was late 90s sometime and and like if calf hasn't done it then and he's just like yeah i'll do a blind race whatever seems fun we early on we were helping him out with certain things but then we uh at some point we kind of had this acknowledgement with calf where he would do the streamer thing where he would ask out loud questions and we 
eventually understood that he didn't actually want the answer from us, we would just be like, lol, he doesn't know kind of a thing. Because <laughs> that's like one of the most annoying. Th that's why you don't want to stream Baba as you or any of those puzzle games where you don't want to be the streamer guy that's asking questions and then chat take you seriously mm -hmm. and answer it. Like, that's one of the more annoying things as a streamer because you can't just like talk about what you're thinking sometimes because then people will take it seriously because if you have a question where it's just like oh wh what does this mean and then it, you can't look at chat for the next however long depending on how many people you have in your chat because then there's inevitably going to be some random guy being like oh it's the end this is the end i've played this game before dude the only you know? way i could ever do a blind playthrough of a puzzle game is if i wasn't looking at chat and at that point what's the point of streaming it yeah i i, I don't know it's weird that's that's why I appreciated playing Cedars because none of us knew what the fuck was going on. <laughs> yeah, it has to be a hyper obscure game that only you've played. <laughs> Not even me. Just like no, nobody's ever played. <laughs> well, I mean, and, you played it now. <laughs> yeah, I've played it You're now. You're playing it. That, like I was complaining about it with the distortion thing last week, and I hate when people just kind of. I I I want to watch a casual stream, or in in this case, calf casually go through. Uh, Ocarina of Time as fast as he can and see what he thinks about you know I want to know what he comes up with as answers maybe maybe part of me will clench my fist like I guess my hands would clench my fists but like I maybe something inside me would be like oh he's having the wrong answer but I don't know that's part of watching somebody sc screw around with a game you Wait, know? Did, did Calf rage at you guys if you tried to help him out no uh, we, we helped him out a few times and then I asked him where he, okay. he was doing the, the streamer just ask questions out loud. And I'm like, you, you don't, you don't want the answers, right? Like you want to figure it out on your own sometimes. And he's just like, yeah, even though it's a race setting, like he wanted the, he wanted the answers to the in between dungeon stuff because a lot of that is obscure. Yeah. That stuff is much more cryptic than just in the dungeon. There's only so many things you can do. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, I need a small key. If I find the, the dungeon map and the compass, then I'm good, kind of a thing. Dude, I was watching Cap struggle so much with getting to the boss door in the Water Temple. It was so funny. He was, <laughs> like, he at the very end, is like that steep ramp with the three spiky things going back and forth. He's yeah. like, what do I do? What do I do? I can't get past him. <laughs> and I think he spent, like, five minutes just trying to get up that ramp. It was so funny. I, yeah, I watched the end of it, and uh, or I, I was talking to him at the end of it, and he's just like, Wait, did you guys just like walk up it? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and he's just like, oh. <laughs> and then oh, it still no. took him a while. He was, like, he was like timing it really badly or something. I, I, I think I literally just walked into that room and then went, all right. And then I started walking up. I think I, think I never had trouble your... with that room even going up. <laughs> I, I think you can just like adjust your speed. I had so much trouble with Dark Link and Morpha and I forgot Dude, keys I, twice. I cannot remember... I figured out some sort of cheese method on Dark Link growing up, but I completely forgot what it was. Dude, it's... It, but all three of us going into Dark Link went, oh, okay, this will be easy. We all played, the, or Quan and I both played it as a kid. Just like, oh, we, we had some sort of strat. We'll figure it out. If you think about, if you go fight Dark Link and try to analyze it, you won't get anywhere with it. Like, it, Dark Link makes no sense... It's actually stupid. So and you're saying the best strategy is just to spam B? You literally... Don't target him and spam B. That's literally the best strategy. Wow. It's insane. Or Din's Fire if you have enough magic, but we didn't have double magic at the time. So... I never think to use Din's Fire in combat because it wastes so much magic. Yeah, but... That, I, I, I think every time I got there as a kid, I, had, I got double magic just for Dark Link, and mm -hmm. I used all my Din's Fire. That's what I used to do. So it, it, it was an odd thing. I don't know. I don't remember where I was going thought process wise with the, we, we did the race. Yeah. We're, uh, so where did you guys get that idea from? Because you had this idea for a couple of weeks now. I don't, I think Quan mentioned it just randomly to Calf and I, and we went, oh, okay. It, it might've been Calf too. I, I actually, I was trying to think about where it, who thought of it, and I don't know. I it genuinely sounds like something one would think of. I don't know. 
Did honestly, but we did it. That was a pretty dope idea because like it was it was fun to watch parts of it, and I'm sure you had fun replaying the game again. I definitely had fun in parts. <laughs> yeah, not not every part's fun, but as a whole, the game's pretty good. Yeah, it, it got kind of tiresome when I was like ahead. I I was ahead like right away. Yeah, I, mean, I think you... entering entering uh uh Deku Tree, I was ahead. I feel and like I if had, I was in I... that race, I would be like. I know, like, the first, like, the child section at the beginning, like, the back of my hand. But then once it gets to adults, I sort of forget what I'm doing. It, it is really weird replaying that, because I, I, I've, I've talked about it a few times. I haven't played OOT in over a decade, at Same. least. And uh, Actually, I okay, remember... No, I take it back, I take it back. I played OOT, like, three years ago uh, when I was hanging out with my old roommate, SM Loader. Mm -hmm. And we were like messing around with some glitches, and he was trying to teach me how to do, uh, what is it, a Hess? Yes. I think it literally took me like 30 minutes to get a single Hess with him trying to explain it to me. <laughs> I'm sure if, I, if like ZFG was explaining it, I'd get it like in five minutes, but I mean, I got it eventually, so. Good. Uh, yeah, go ahead with your bullshit. <laughs> You know what, Trey? I don't want to... Uh, no, that's not I, disrespectful. I mean, you're amazing shit. <laughs> I, I haven't played... It, it was really weird replaying it because I haven't played it in over a decade. And eventually I fell into trusting my instincts in that game where I had played it so many times as a kid that I kind of had routes. Oh, dude, I totally saw that in the Gerudo Fortress. You remember that one dude walks by you when you walk in that one entrance? Dude, I, I literally walked into that room and I'm like, I know, I know that there's a guard coming. Like, for sure. Like, this bitch and has thrown me in jail like six times in the past. It's not going to happen this time. Yeah. I remember. So, it's, it's pretty insane. Like, specifically the Carpenters for the Gerudo Fortress. I haven't watched or paid attention to a speedrunner do those in a while. Mm -hmm. and I had my own route when I was a kid that I would, like, go into certain doors, and the only times that I got caught was when I hesitated on, like, on... Uh, when you come out of a certain door, you have to literally just go into the next door instead of waiting, and I waited to... And I was just like, wait, what am I supposed to do here? Where, in the back of my head, I'm like, you just go into this door really quick, and I... It's, I hesitated, went a little bit later, and got caught by the guard that turns around. I'm like, oh, okay. But, uh, <laughs> but the route was still pretty... Like, I just trusted my, I guess, nine-year-old self <laughs> that played the game over and over and over again. If, I, if speedrunning was a thing back when I was a kid, I would have speedrun OOT, for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I ended up winning. I, what I was saying, it was kind of tiresome being in the lead and Quan just like... Uh, it, 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 it's funny racing Quan, where it's just like if you're ahead he's going to like make fun of the fact that you're ahead because he, he was just like oh he, Sid, Sid made routes or Sid whatever but if you're behind he'll he'll make fun of the fact that you're behind you can't win in a Quan race yeah Quan's either like salty that you're winning or just like sort of trash talking you if he's ahead yeah, so, like, I was just kind of sitting there going, like, whatever, who cares? And at some <laughs> point, uh, Sapphire in my chat was just like, yeah, like, Quan, Quan's been shitting on you for the past three hours. I'm like, it's fine. I've been shitting on him in the race. <laughs> like, yeah, I got him. <laughs> so it's totally fine. But Dude, so okay, I ended you, up getting... you and Quan never got it along too well when it comes to racing for some reason. Yeah, Quan like, always I remember is, uh... Quan was, like, watching you do a run and would, like, laugh every time you messed up. And he got, like, so mad at him. <laughs> Dude, it, it, I remember it was like during Gooper Blooper in I remember, Rico. Dude, I remember this exact same thing. I was gonna say it, but <laughs> and I it was just like, like too specific. I was just so pissed. It was just one of those runs that I wasn't playing well, and we were racing, and I was just like, "Juan, just shut up." <laughs> <laughs> and this, and, and all this being said, this is from one of my top three guests, or I guess episodes that we've recorded. You know, dude, I remember. Like, I think it was like you messed up the box uh, spin jump, and he's just like. <laughs> I guess yeah. classic Quan it's, laugh. It gets really annoying if you're if you're screwing up and somebody's <laughs> just like eagle eye watching you and laughs every time you mess up. That gets so annoying. Yeah, it's tilting. <laughs> it's like Twitch chat on crack when they're saying reset. It's yeah. like a real person though, not just words on the screen. Just like in the call, just laughing at you. 
<laughs> uh, so yeah, the yeah, results of the race were you had like an eight hour, 20 minute run. Yeah. And then Quan's power went out like 10 hours in, right? Yeah. He, he would have gotten like 10 something, probably. He, he, was like, he, he was like in the spirit symbol and his power went out. He, he was in the trials at the end. Oh, really? Was, that late? It, it was pretty funny because I, I was watching him because I, would, I had already been done for however long. And I, w I was watching him do the trials. And he entered, he, he paused. And when, in OOT, when you try to back out of the pause menu, you actually have to press start. And like playing Mario Sunshine, because we're, we were actually using Wii VC with GameCube controllers. It, with Mario Sunshine, you just press B and you back out of the, the start menu. But with that muscle memory, you go into the save text box. So Quan paused and like did some equipping or whatever. He tried to back out of the start menu with B, went to the, went to the save menu during the trials, and he just backed out of the save. And I went... I would have saved because every time I did that by accident, I was just like, "Fuck it, I'll save." Like, yeah, who that's cares? me as well. I just like always save on one screen. And then, literally within ten minutes, his power went out. <laughs> oh my and, god! And I was like, "Oh my god, that sucks." <laughs> and uh, so, so his power went out, and he rebooted after however many minutes, rejoined the call, and he turned on his game again and went, "Yeah, I'd have to reboot." Spirit Temple, so I'm I quit. Oh, that's what <laughs> like, I was thinking I of. Yeah, he like saved before Spirit Temple. So he he didn't actually he didn't actually finish the race. That's why we're actually doing a rematch tomorrow yep. when we're recording this. Well, so yeah, so like Sunday. Done. Yeah, it'll already be done. It'll be already done. But uh, Calf got a 13 hour time. Like that's pretty good. considering he has never casually played through the game and he soloed temples. I remember the exact good. time because of the leech part. It was 13, 13, 37. You know, the uh, leaderboard mods retimed it, and it's a 13, 13, 36. Oh, so it was yeah. actually worse than I thought it was. Yeah. Or better than I thought it was, my bad. Worse because it's not leap. Yeah, it's, it's not leap. Yeah. That's what really counts. Actually, I, so, I never I, realized. So if Quan had continued that run, could he still have beaten Calf? Oh, yeah. So I can never give up, and now... Kafalon, he didn't give up. He got second place. And Quan, who was all high and mighty, actually got last. Yeah, Quan was... Uh... Yeah, he didn't want to replay Spirit Temple. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't uh... blame him. That seems really tedious. It, it does. It would suck. So I, I totally get that. But we're talking about doing other Zeldas. We, we, we haven't talked about any other genres of or uh, series of games. We've been talking about doing Wind Waker... You might join us for a TP one. Dude, I would be down for one maker or TP. So we've been talking about that. I, I, I don't I would know just where have this to came go from. back to my parents' house at some point and pick those games up. Yeah, you you got You should do that. I don't know where this idea came. I I don't know why we're all of a sudden doing a bunch of glitchless runs, but dude, racing is know, fun. It, it goes back to the older. I mean, you guys weren't on SRL because SRL is kind of dead, but um. I mean, this is sort of what, like, Giano intended, the super old-school guy who was sort of the head of SRL. Yep. He just enjoyed sort of casually racing different games, and then it's, it, it's honestly, people, it's, it's a lost, fun thing you can do. It's not always about just grinding out the same game. Well, it, it's also pretty interesting, uh, the correlation between us doing Super Mario Sunshine versus doing glitchless Zelda because Sunshine doesn't have a lot. Sure, it has like EYG and GBS and Yoshi Skip, but other than that, it's just kind of optimizing movement. Mm -hmm. And uh, doing glitchless Zelda is kind of the same thing where there's certain, not glitches, but skips you can still... Apparently in glitchless, you can do basement one skip in uh, Deku Tree. That's what... Quan figured out since the race. Hmm. I don't know if he's gonna actually try it. We we're not practicing. Or wait, like, so there's a difference in like glitchless, then there's restricted or something. Unrestricted. unrestricted? I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, un, un unrestricted. Uh, glitchless makes it so that at least you can't save warp, or you can save warp. Yeah, but then in, in true glitchless, save warp is considered a glitch. Yes. Which I don't fully understand, because like, what if you're casually playing, and you well, save somewhere, take a break, come back to it, I, oh my god, I save warped. I, well, I don't think it's considered a glitch. It's just, 
like it's they're both glitchless categories. One's restricted and one's unrestricted. Right. It's just you know? save warping. I mean, I guess I kind of see it thinking about it now, but I'll, the only reason we didn't save warp be was because Quan was just like, "Yeah, that's lame," and I'm like, "Yeah, it is kind of lame." <laughs> yeah, you can make your own house rules. Why not? Yeah, I, I thought it was interesting. And it, the category we did pretty much what the category is, and uh, that's pretty interesting. There are some things we did for no. There was there was like I was so far ahead that it didn't even matter. Like this was before Quan. Uh, uh, before Quan's power went out or anything like that. So I, I knew I was going to win, but uh, I, I literally stopped in Ganon's Tower to just talk to chat about certain experiences in Ganon's Tower I've had when I was a kid. Because the room before the stairs in Ganon's Tower, before the, the Ganon fight, obviously, or the Ganondorf fight, uh, I got stuck in that room, the one with the pots that is the lower level of the Ganondorf fight. Yeah, the, I got the stuck one in that room with, when like, I was... The column in the middle you can climb on the four sides. Yeah. I got stuck in that room when I was a kid, like six years old, seven years old, eight years old, something like that, all the time, or like my first playthrough, obviously, because I didn't realize there was another door in the room. Like the, the door was so big that I thought it was, I, like I walked around the pillar and saw the first or the second door and thought it was the first door again. So I didn't even know there was a second door. So I got stuck in that room that you're not supposed to get stuck in. It's just a weird room. It's just like, I guess, to show how big the castle is, but it really serves no purpose. <laughs> well, it's supposed to establish that there's, I don't know. I, pff, I yeah, don't I know. guess it shows you there's that lower section you can fall down to. Yeah, so I, I thought it was, it, I thought it was interesting doing uh, the glitchless run. I, I actually had like an emotional moment during it. Not like I didn't cry or anything. I just remembered playing through the game the first time and my sister actually reading the uh the the deku sprout that pops up after forest temple like re uh, my the, the i new, remember my sister the new what? deku tree yeah the the deku tree sprout the new one that pops out after you beat the forest temple uh i remembered my sister t reading that text to me when i was like six years old and i haven't thought about that in years i don't know these random memories can come back to you. I, I bet they'll all have that moment if I play TP again or Wind Waker. Yeah. I, I shared the story with you the earlier, but I have like a, a a very vague, sad memory of the Wind Waker. Where, well, I mean, it was a good memory until my parents came in. <laughs> but Oh, yeah. So my, my brother and I, all night, were just like playing through Wind Waker, having a grand old time. And we made quite a bit of progress. I think we probably got from like, the forest haven area all the way through tower of the gods all the way through like getting to that hyrule section for the first time so quite a lot of gameplay especially at that age and then i guess we didn't save for a long ass time as far as i can remember maybe we did save earlier than i thought it this was a long time ago and it was late at night so my parents were like all right you need to turn that off it's time to go to bed or they were raging over something which <laughs> in led them to turn off the console before we can get a chance to save and yeah we lost hours of progress so Bad. i'll never forget that but i forget what the cons what the circumstances were exactly i just know that, that happened <laughs> dude kids nowadays will never understand the well they, they might understand the i can't save anywhere or yeah. can't save right now thing in certain games but like replaying breath of the wild it saves all the time <laughs> dude auto saving is so nice it's just you never have to worry about that again like you enter a new area, it's just like auto save. It's like, oh, okay, all right. I, 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 but like, I still have the muscle memory of when I'm done playing a game, I'll still pause, save, and and turn off the system. Oh yeah, time. I do it too. I don't know. I don't a hundred percent trust auto saving, but it almost always is a good backbone. Yeah, for sure. So, so Quan Calf and I are gonna re race the glitchless again. It'll be interesting doing a re race or a rematch. Yeah. Um, now. Now we all know the game. I'm guessing you will get a 643. It depends on how many times Dark Link kills me. <laughs> it Wait, actually but does. if you just spam B, do, are you guaranteed to win? I guess. I, like, I, I need to have a fairy. That's all I know. I'll, I'll need to have a fairy. 
and I'll do Are you going to do thing. any research ahead of time to like look up any strats or just do it? No, we're, uh, we're still doing the, I don't think any of us are going to take it that serious. We, we actually had like a follow-up conversation. It's like, are, are we doing any prep for this one? And it's just like, no. I think the just, less prep you do, the better or the more fun. Yeah. Well, like, like if, if calf went, calf's been doing hundred percent. Like he's just been going through the game. He's been he was doing the Gerudo trials. Oh, he's still doing that. I saw him doing that earlier. Every now and then he he's uh, going to go do that, but mm -hmm. uh, like he hasn't gone to. I don't know. He, he hasn't routed anything out. So we're just kind of going to go by the seat of our. It'll probably be the same outcome. Like I I wouldn't be surprised if Quan maybe beat me. I don't know. I, I it'll probably be very similar. But and also, the, the interesting thing about if we raise TP is that you're playing on the Wii version while I'm playing on GameCube. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I don't know funny. how it's going to affect things casually, but it's going to be well. First of all, it's like a totally mirror of the GameCube version, the Wii version. Yeah. Um, but I don't know what else it really affects. So. When we do Wind Waker, we're going to do the uh, standard definition version, though. Oh yeah, I've never played HD. See, it, 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 I I haven't actually played HD either, but. I, I'm more, uh, my mindset is more, I don't want to set up my Wii U. Yeah, I'm also, I'm, I'm a little bit worried that I will not be able to finish Wind Waker in one sitting, but I will try my darndest. Yeah, that's, that's, that's all we ask. That's going to take longer than not going to time for sure. Quan didn't finish his OOT run, so you should be fine. <laughs> <laughs> if his power goes out again. Yeah, his power, dude, his power went out again, like the other day, like after the OOT race. Yeah. Uh, because when his power went out, he's just like, dude, my power never goes out. This is cra This is so dumb. And then th another two or three days later, he's just like, my power went out again. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, okay. Well, maybe I expect it if, well, I guess the race has already been over. But if you ended up watching the rematch, I expect that you saw a lot more saves on Quan's end. <laughs> that's That's all I'm going to say about that. But yeah, that was that. also my run got rejected. Really? Yeah, I uh, dude, Twitch highlighting sucks. So you highlighted the whole thing, and it was missing something. It was missing the. Th it, so the the game starts with you you start at uh, file select right right, and then there's three seconds of like black screen, and then it goes in a vast deep forest in Hyrule. Twitch highlighting actually cut off the first three seconds of black screen after file select. So they denied the entire run. What? <laughs> I, I had it edited like pretty well, the highlight, but if it's a longer highlight, it'll just cut off. There, there are certain cutoff points for twi Twitch highlighting. And like, sometimes it'll jump a, a 20 seconds ahead or 20 seconds uh, behind. It's not like super accurate. Wait, wait, wait. so you couldn't just start the highlight sooner. I well, I didn't know it was gonna cut off. So you, I mean, you could just like do it again, and it actually it would actually work. Yeah, it's it's it, but but now it's like we're gonna do the rematch tomorrow anyway. So I yeah, re-highlighted sure. it, and I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to send it in there. That's but. crazy. They would do that though. It's like as if you would fake that time. Yeah, like <laughs> it's just like oh, here's the fourth last time. Wait, on wait, the wait. So does Ocarina of Time require video for everything? I see. I think it's one of those things where if I submitted it without a video, it would have been accepted. But because I, yeah. I submitted it with video that had the first three seconds cut off, it's denied. <laughs> Dude, that that is so silly. I think even SMS mods would approve that. But it, I don't know. Rules are. I I, I didn't. I, I looked at it and I was just like, lol. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of it. Because uh, Qua or Calf's got accepted, but his was. I guess he <laughs> highlighted the whole thing. I guess one I final know. point to mention on this topic is it really goes to show that you can speedrun Ocarina at a time, or any Zelda for that matter, and it doesn't really translate that well to casual gaming. No. Whereas, like, for Mario, if you run Mario Sunshine, it'll affect every aspect of playing it casually because you're just going to be better at the game. Yeah. Whereas Zelda, it's less about knowing how to be better and more about knowing what to do <laughs> it, it it's it's like a puzzle game in that like sure zelda is a puzzle game to an extent but yeah with puzzle game speed running you're literally just like this is the solution to the puzzle this is the solution to the puzzle this is the solution whereas to the puzzle. simply yeah. playing a mario game playing the game in any context you're just going to get better 
which will just help everywhere. So yeah, like I don't think I'm better at OOT now, <laughs> but I it, it I did finish it in one sitting, so it's like my third game I've ever done that with. That's nice. Even ZFG could do a casual playthrough of Ocarina of Time if he wanted to, but like none of us could do a casual playthrough of Mario Sunshine really. No, because it's like why would I just intentionally sandbag my movement? <laughs> Yeah, that's what a lot of people were saying about the bouncy boy playing Sudbur Sunburn. I didn't end up watching any of it, but it looked like he was just... So he was casually playing through the open world, in quotes, yeah. uh, hack that is Sunburn that you can go from level to level that have, like, connecting pathways. And it looked like he was just trying to casually play through Sunshine. And I was just like, oh, this is weird. <laughs> but Yeah, it's just, like, yeah. kind of jarring when it's like, I know you're holding back. Yeah, <laughs> kind of. Yeah. But anyway, um, speaking of Mario, we got a huge breakthrough record from our boy Simply. Yeah. After eight years of playing the game, for the first time ever, he got the 120 star world record, 138, 30 something. What was the seconds place? Uh, Mello told me it was 28 earlier today, but I can. Oh, 28. Check okay. Well, I'm just totally wrong. Yeah. Anyway, I'm pretty sure that was it. Uh, yeah, Simply. Really knocked it out of the park. He's been grinding for a long time. He really deserved it. Uh, couldn't be more proud of him, to be honest. But when you said before, like just now, when we were talking about Mario games versus Zelda games, and you said simply playing a Mario game, I was just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that could have been like the most amazing transition. Holy crap. Yeah. It's like simple, talking about simply playing a Mario game, you know? Yeah. I, I'm trying to think about how that would work, but if I was a genius, I could make it work. You, you, yeah, if you were a genius, you would have made it work. But you know what? We live in the universe we live in. Indeed. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that the record was cool. I, I feel like everybody just, or a lot of people joined it after it happened. Like we were in a call with Emo and Emo was just like, oh, simply got the record. And we're just like, wait, what? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> like it just Like happened. we all knew it could happen. But the thing is, I hardly ever watch Twitch streams in general. So there's no way I would have seen it live. Um, and I seem like kind of a, a fair weather fan coming in all of a sudden like yeah I knew you could do it even though I never watch you <laughs> <laughs> but then again that's pretty much the case by the way there's like a lawnmower outside it's super loud shut up I don't know if you can hear that I cannot anyway uh, lawnmower aside um, yeah I, I've always believed in him he was showing a ton of potential especially in recent months I just I hardly ever watch streams anymore, so just take my word for it that I believe in him. <laughs> yeah, Simply was always the guy that, like, seemed... Like, every, everybody knew he could do it, but he hadn't done it yet, so everybody just kind of went, eh, you know? Well, especially, like, years I, ago, he was just always a few levels behind Cheese and Pumke, it seemed. But then, in his recent comeback in, like, the past year, he just really leveled up. Yeah. Like, I think you know it's what? like a, maybe like a better mentality. Because as we mentioned plenty of times, as you know, mentality is huge in gaming. <laughs> mentality is massive. Especially in a fairly lengthy and optimized category like 120 star. Yeah. I, I, I wonder how Liam looks at this record. Like, it's a, it was a record by what, 10, 15 seconds, something like that? I think even he is happy for him because he knows how hard he's worked for it, how long he's played the game. And also, Liam had his record for about two months, which isn't too shabby. It's not like one week, like in your case. Yeah, let's bring it up. <laughs> I'm just saying it could have been worse. He could have lost it instantly. But, you know, two months. He could have lost it in 13 hours. <laughs> yeah, or even less than a day, as you would know. Yeah. But, yeah, simply, like, he's a great face for the game. I'm really going to be gladder that he... Finally got it. But Kaflon brought up a really good point earlier where it's actually, it's super unusual for someone to play a game for that long and for the first time get the record eight years later. Yeah. Like usually people will get a world record like in the first couple of years of playing and then sort of trail off from there. But simply just sort of, you know, started off like pretty, pretty damn good. Um, took a break for a while, had I think some wrist issues or something. Came back in the past year and leveled up his gameplay and mentality and just finally proved him wrong, as we would say. I was trying to think of the SMS equivalent to Simply. Like, if 
somebody like somebody that had dedicated a lot of time to the game that didn't quite get world record but was always like up there but simply recently has been what top five for a while i guess the and, the, the closest case would be jj yeah because jj's been around for quite a while probably not quite as long as simply but he did finally get world record later than he probably should have in his career because he's always been capable of it yeah but um simply really is like one of a kind with that because i mean eight years that's <laughs> it, it, it would literally be like if i was like slightly better at super mario sunshine and i'd been playing for two more years yeah that's literally that's the, that's the comparison like i've never had world record in any percent but i am like 114 level and everybody counts counts me out actually no dude i'm so dumb you know the best comparison i can make what paper aria yeah, that's a pretty good one. Dude, that's actually the best comparison. Paper Ario, which we should get as a guest in the near future because he definitely deserves it, and he's a he's a cool guy, right? Yeah, he. you know what? For all the work you put in, you get to be a guest on this podcast. Yeah, you, you know, that's <laughs> I'm sure your number one goal for those 120 records was to get on Video Games Are Hard. Well, I'm guess what? On you are in a one-way ticket to Video Games Are Hard. Woo! Yeah, it's like the, it's the golden ticket to Vegas. It's just like, yeah! It's so exciting, but... um. Yeah. Yeah, paper, and we can get into it when he actually comes on the podcast. It's a pretty, pretty cool story, I guess, uh, with us being rivals for a while. But um, he's always been like pretty high level in 120. Then he sort of took a break from the game for a few years, and then he came back and really just improved much further than ever before, and got several 120 world records in the past few months. Yeah. So well, I really, I mean, that's, it's honestly crazy. What? Like Paper got like, he pushed the category from a mid 258 to a 256 in a matter of weeks. It, and, it's interesting. It's interesting because I'm trying to like, com I was trying to compare it to an, the any percent category because it's our most competition with an SMS. Right. But I wasn't thinking of the 120 category. <laughs> I wasn't either, but like, because even though it's like the same number of collectibles, 120 That's star true. and 120 shine competition wise are pretty different yeah so it's it wasn't easy to make that comparison but i think paper Rario definitely takes the cake because he paper could have always pushed himself further in the past and got on the record sooner especially when it was much easier to get the record but nah he just you know he really pushed himself in more recent months and <laughs> it worked out but but long story short, congrats to Simply for getting the world record in 120 Woo! star. Uh, the most heartwarming part was afterwards when his parents came in and he he was just like, I did it. And they were just like, wait, you did what? And it's just like, I got the world record. And then they're just super supportive. <laughs> and oh, my God, it was so heartwarming. I retweeted it. It, it like a, uh, I think of Ludwig tweet. Yeah, Ludwig tweeted it. It's like this is the yeah. most wholesome thing I've seen. It it was super whole. It, it reminded it reminded Trey of the the calf. It was uh, literally calf all over again. If only there was face cam for calves around the. <laughs> give like, me, oh, give me a uh, hug. Give me a hug. <laughs> and wh world record <laughs> hug. <laughs> Man, maybe simply more uh, like Cafalon in that way. Who knows? Maybe. Loves his family. Oh, the lawnmower's back. Sorry about that. I, can, I literally cannot hear it. No, I can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> you're, sorry, you're, you're apologizing to yourself. Just like, sorry, me. I'll, I, I just uh, know that when I talk, it's probably going to pick up my mic. Eh. You'll, you'll edit it out in post. Yeah, I'll find a way to, like, engineer the audio to remove the lawnmower noise over my talking. It'll be easy. Who knows? Who knows, man? Easy peasy. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's... Uh, that's that's our gaming news of the like we have. There's marathons going on. There's speedrun marathons going on. I there's like been a watching pace a thing uh, hosted by a GSA going on. We there was a there was an SMS bingo between JJ and Paper. I think this right. morning. I was I in bed for that. I was I was gone for that, so I did not watch that. But so I could have watched it, but it's the weekend, so you know I'm gonna sleep in. But yeah, those are our speedrunning updates. I don't know. It's been kind of a slow week for me. I've been just kind of like hanging out. 
But I guess one other SMS thing we should touch on, even though we don't know much about it. Uh, oh, yeah. It's been proven you can use arbitrary code execution in Sunshine. Yeah. And, you know, Sid and I, we're not exactly adept in the world of hacking games and stuff. Yeah. However, Noki Doki definitely is. And he's been figuring out how to use some weird cutscene overlap nonsense and also he like uses like the x's in Duffino plaza to break a barrel and then he grabs a shine and then he yep. found a way to like if you hack the water droplets to be in certain places during the cutscene which i guess act as the the arbitrary code it can theoretically warp you to bowser which is pretty nuts to think about but like after you've spawned the shine and eel but not gotten it yeah you have to like let the let the eel each you twice and have two of those cutscenes play. Yeah, it's uh I mean Nokidoki you know, himself said that even though he proved it's possible in theory to warp to Bowser, um with the current method it's never gonna happen, not even in a TAS. Because yeah. the, the droplet positioning is just so unlikely. Uh-huh. But wherever the droplets go can write a bit of code, I guess, which is super interesting. I think they said it's the first GameCube game to have Ace in it. Yeah. See, Trey Trey brought this up to talk about. And like before the podcast, not just now. He he also brought it up just now. But I I don't know. I've seen clips of it and I'm just sitting there going like, okay. I don't know. See, I mean, the for now it's theoretical, all theoretical. It's all what? speculative, but something could come from it. Who knows? Yeah, it's uh, I don't know. I'm a big hater of task stuff nowadays. And Ace goes right in... I, I'm just such a curmudgeon that... <laughs> yeah, you hate all, passes. All, dude, I hate all of this. I, uh, I don't know. The Ace thing is kind of interesting. And it, it like uses part of a, the, the linked pair cutscene and getting the shine from under Bell and the droplets with... What breaks the barrel? Like, you place the barrel in the, the, the linked pair that you already already have sprayed. Does the respawning linked pair? Yeah, I believe so. The, the respawning X just breaks the barrel and then like it puts that's, it out again instantly. That's, that's insane. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of interesting. And then you also have to have all this eel stuff done, and then you have to get super lucky for it to work. So, you know. Yeah, no good. He's figuring it out. I mean, we remember when the Ocarina of Time people were saying. Yeah, this whole ace thing, it's going to be TAS only probably forever. And then one week later, oh, we have an actual run now. <laughs> That's because they have, like, a lot of people <laughs> yeah. that are willing to work on that Unfortunately, Noki Doki is, like, the one smart enough person working on it right now. We need more Noki Dokis in the world to work on it. Yeah. And collaborates on that. And then that would actually be something that would make it worth making a brand new like update any percent history video because as it stands mm -hmm. there's no really need to because like sure 113 can happen but it's almost always like the same it's the same route maybe some new movement some new strats but it's not nothing too crazy but i mean like if, if the if the route became 20 shines then go to eel then set up this crazy thing that's a significant uh, difference <laughs> well See, I was thinking about it in the curmudgeonly way, where it was like, well, we when we find Ace, any percent becomes this, but then our legacy any percent will be 45 shines, or whatever it is. It'll just be like, any percent no Ace, maybe? Yeah, like, so, so like, it'll just, it'll generate the the category split, and that's it. But maybe, it, it probably would, I don't know. Yeah. It, it's, it still would do that. And, uh, I mean, even if it does turn out to be a thing that sort of kills off any percent, just like Moon Warp did, just like Ace did in Ocarina of Time, yeah. it's... I don't really care at this point, because I'm probably not going to play any percent anytime soon again anyway, so it's like, whatever. Yeah. I'm mostly done with Sunshine, so at this point, it's like, yeah, let's see if something crazy happens. I'm down. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm right there with you with Sunshine. Uh, I'm just doing glitchless any percent races at this point i don't know what i'm doing who knows it'll all 
tumble into place. Potentially. Yeah, I might link the video in the description of that water drop thing if I remember to. It's insane. Like you're you're watching the video. There's a lot of comments underneath when I when I first watched it, where it was just like, yeah, when when he said it's purely theoretical and it and the the screen goes totally white at the end you think that he's just dead and it's just like oh yeah like imagine if bowser was here you know that this is how ace would work but then he just goes to bowser and you're yeah. just like oh which is okay. pretty mind blowing it's like wow this is actually like ace ace is confirmed real but whether or not we can actually control it and make it useful is the question yeah yeah but we'll I see. Know. I think that's pretty much all we got on that. We don't really know much outside of that. There's one movement mechanic recently in Sunshine that's actually been found. You know that? Um, what would that be? It, if you Y input during or before your rocket launch, it'll give you a short rocket launch. Oh, really? I didn't know or, that. Or something like that. That's crazy. I, I, I saw it a few weeks ago. It was uh, like a paper tweet. So you don't actually have to like... During Pianta 8, I don't have to time the, the sidestep off or anything like that. I, you, like, you have to Y input at some point, and you get a, literally a weaker one. So, oh, so cool. the rocket goes off, then you hit Y? I, I, see, that doesn't work, though, right? I'm pretty sure that doesn't work. Yeah, I'm pretty I sure you mid- can't press Y during the animation. Yeah, I, I need to re-acknowledge this tweet that happened a couple weeks ago, but it, it's something about Y input. I don't remember. I can believe it. Oh, and God, I, I'm just rethinking, like, this Ace topic has totally stirred my memory on recent discoveries in Sunshine. You, it, for 96 and 79, we don't, in Rico 8, you don't actually have to clip into the gate or into the, the cage with a coconut anymore. Oh, yeah. You can just do, like, a side flip dive that was inspired by a clip that I posted on Twitter that Zelpiku found. <laughs> out how to, or like orange orange and zelpiku both figured out how to do it so if you really think about it uh you basically found that i tweeted it out literally a year and a half ago i think wow or li- like literally a year ago and they went hey and like a week ago zelpiku retweeted it and he was just kind of like huh this looks like and then an hour later it's like oh we found a thing it's like oh okay cool i don't know but yeah i guess I'm you just, just like dive into the corner where the shine is on like the cage yeah at at a very precise positioning and you just go straight through and then you're just in there and the the split you you don't have to get you just have to go get the rocket and get up there and then you're done i don't know i don't know how consistent it is but the il time has gone way down for sure i have not turned on sunshine to try it out that's how little i care about super mario sunshine right now (laughs) i don't i don't know yeah i haven't turned on sunshine in over a month so, uh, but a game that I have turned on Trey multiple times, mm-hmm. Breath of the Wild. Oh yeah, the great Korok without DLC or Hens Hunt. Yes, it it's it's relaxing. It's it's what I do to just like sit and relax and just kind of hang out. I'm at like four. Uh, I'm at five hundred and forty one, I think. And when I say that, I actually don't know for sure right now. It's something around there. That's Honestly, pretty good. you probably found one during this podcast just magically, so it's probably gone up. It's it's <laughs> it might have happened. It th- there's so many rocks that you have to pick up in that game. It's just pick up a rock. Yeah, a so your seed. your strats to find Korok seeds became go on go on and off stasis mode and look for glowing rocks. Yeah, that's literally the the it's strat. Like, oh my god, a rock! It's like oh a chest over here. Okay, whatever. Oh a rock. Yes. I literally do not care about chests. <laughs> Rocks though, rocks though. When you, when I blow up, and I was telling it in the in the Chillin' Dude podcast, when I blow up a stack of rocks like in the wall, and I see a chest, I'm like, eh, I'll see what's in the chest, but who cares? If it's another rock that I can pick up, I'm like, fuck yeah, I, <laughs> I got this. But it, it, you still have to pay attention to the environment. I, I still have to pay attention. Pretty, I, I have to pay pretty close attention to the environment in order to find like the blowable. The blow upable rocks aren't uh, like super evident. Everything in stasis mode is like faded except for the things that you can manipulate. So, like, it's really hard to see those blow upable uh, rock walls in stasis. So, you have to just go in and out. And uh, 
I, I don't know. You just walk around and then you hope to find shit. And then you enter a new area. Dude, I've had so many dry spells with with these. Like, I, I, I've been like, it's over, man. I can't find any more. I'm at 450. There's no more in this game. I'm halfway through. I don't know how there's 900. And then the next session, I, I can just, like, go and stumble onto an area and I go, oh, wait, I haven't been here since, like, early game. Maybe I should explore here for Korok Seeds. And then I get 20. And I'm like, oh, okay. Cool. Awesome. It's so, a surprisingly big map once you start exploring it. It's 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 kind of fun to do. I don't know. It's it's weirdly interesting to do. It's my new casual. Sounds fun. I mean, it sounds monotonous, <laughs> but also it can be relaxing. It's it. You know what? It's just relaxing. I don't know if it's. I, I don't know if fun. Uh, dude, it's. I I I both like the game more now, but there's more things to complain about in Breath of the Wild for me now. Like I have more. I have more Breath of the Wild complaint content, but I also like the game slightly more than I did. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's like there's no music in the environment. The combat kind of sucks. And I actively avoid it by putting on the mask of whatever enemy is close by. But also, the world is kind of nice to just kind of wander through. I don't know. It's weird. It's a weird game. Yeah, we'll see what they change in Breath of the Wild 2, which... I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> your your shit's still gonna break, right? Your shit's still gonna break. Breakable right? items in Nintendo games are not gonna go away. It, dude, there's they break so easy. <laughs> so, w one of the legendary weapons that you get in like the Gerudo Valley sword that you get after defeating the divine beast, the camel. Yeah, I remember, I remember and, that. The the sword that you get, and you can replace by uh, giving a lower level weapon, like a, a lower level specific weapon and like a diamond or something. You can exchange that with the priestess guard or whatever her character name is. I, I can't remember. And you can get this weapon and it's like a 32 strength weapon and you just kind of have it and you're like, oh, okay. I did all that just to get it back once a week ago. And I, I had it, and I was like, late game, this weapon kind of sucks, but let's see how long it lasts. It was like, it was three battles, and it was <laughs> gone. And it cost me, I had to find a specific weapon and a diamond. So I'm like, this is pointless. Like, Dude. all of those weapons suck. The, the only good weapons in that game are, like, the falcon bow, because the distance on the arrows are a lot better. And everybody shits, and I've recently shit on the Master Sword in Breath of the Wild. But I, I understand why it's breakable, and everybody complains about how it's breakable. It's overpowered in Hyrule Castle. It is so good, and it doesn't break. Or I don't think it breaks. I, either it doesn't break, or it just... Oh, wait, you mean when is, it has, like, the uh, like the double power, it doesn't break? Yeah. I, I, I don't think it does. Maybe I haven't used it very long, but it, uh, it didn't break while I used it in, like, two Linnell fights straight. So... That's pretty sick. I don't actually know. But like everybody complains about how the Master Sword just breaks in the wild and everything like that. And I and what's kind of funny is I use it to break ores now. <laughs> yeah. Just to like just yeah, to remember, not use any of my other weapons. I remember Quan was raging at that too. Why do you use the Master Sword to break some ore? Yeah. I I don't know. I just use the weapons that I don't care about and I just do that. But uh but it is it is really good in Hyrule Castle, so I kind of get it. But uh but yeah, there. Nintendo is for some reason really obsessed with having breakable items and in, in stuff right now. So I don't. I'm not as confident as a lot of people with Breath of the Wild two having not breakable we weapons in it. I just hope sure. that like the higher level stuff lasts more than like three battles. Yeah, that'd be nice. I do too. Because <laughs> then you feel more inclined to actually use your good stuff. Yeah, like. Literally the the staff weapons, the the spears. If I, I was complaining about it with you and Emo in the call the other day, you can. The only interesting way to th to use weapons is to throw them sometimes. So like the boomerangs, you can throw and they come back, and the spears, you can stab someone a while, and there's no there's not very much variety in the regular stabbing. Just like mm -hmm. you can stab a lot or just once or twice, you know. Or you can like do a jump stab 
You know, there isn't much variety past that. But with the spears, you can also throw them. And that's kind of sick. But they mostly always break when you throw them. So, like, it, no, it, it, they, don't, it, they don't have to give you a warning. Like, halfway through the fight, half, halfway through a fight with a random Yiga clan member, probably. Uh, actually, no, they don't last <laughs> that long. But, like, halfway, <laughs> halfway through a fight of, with anybody... It wouldn't give you a warning for it being near broken. And then you can do like step back and like, you know what? This is going to be sick. I'm going to throw this spear at him. It won't do very much damage and it'll break. And it's just like, cool. All right. <laughs> well, that's awesome. But it's a ranged attack. It's so good. It, it, it would be cool if it, it doesn't do more damage. <laughs> it's so annoying. Like if it breaks and it killed the guy with like half health, I'd be so down. But it doesn't. And then they're just still alive and you're just like, I guess I'll shoot shock arrows at it. Or I, can, I can picture the noise of it breaking right now. <sighs> Man. Every, everything breaks in that game so fast. So annoying. Yeah, also another game where shit breaks. Animal Crossing. I've quit cold turkey. Ooh. I, you know, that's how I play Animal Crossing. I, I play it for a few months and then at some point I'm like, all right, I'm wasting my time. I should use other stuff and just don't play it at all for like the next year, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I, Animal Crossing, it was a dope game. Uh, I like what they're doing with a lot of stuff, a lot of the new changes and stuff. Um, I'm not super big. And actually, one of the biggest complaints with the game was the lack of furniture variety. <laughs> There's just, there was like so much cooler furniture. I remember in just like city folk that was so easy to get your hands on versus like New Horizons. There's just like, oh, I can just craft more wooden stuff or, oh, wow, a new chair in the store. Finally, geez, there's like no chairs. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, other than that, uh, it's a fine game. It's just uh, <laughs> I'm, I got to change time wasters. How many, how many forgeries have you found? Have I found? I I in the I don't or I how don't many forgeries know. have I forged <laughs> in in Animal Crossing? I don't know the the painting ship guy. Oh oh, you mean like oh, they mean like forging stuff? I'm dumb. Yeah. Um. I I'm pretty sure I never found a real painting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I only ever saw red like two times because I'm pretty sure he comes like at a specified time, and I just wasn't playing during that time, so. Same with, like, Gulliver. I'm pretty sure I've only seen Gulliver, like, three times in, like, the two months I've played the game. Since I'm pretty sure I was always at work whenever he was available. So, I don't know. Animal Crossing, it's, it's hard to be efficient with Animal Crossing without time traveling if you work a full-time job. So, I was already kind of demotivated, demotivated by that. Yeah. You should have just pulled a Noak, just immediately time traveled. I should have been time traveling, man. I was so sticking to my guns, but <laughs> as a kid, like when you have like a much more open schedule, it's so much easier to accomplish it in that game. Yeah, for sure. That makes sense. It's a sad reality. Speaking, speaking of games, quit cold Turkey. I haven't talked about it in a while because I have not been playing it. I've not opened it to check if I've been kicked out of my, uh, my, uh, Raid Shadow Legends Clan. And what game would that but be? I have not played Raid Shadow Legends. One of the <laughs> last things that made me like not want to play that game anymore, I ran into a random legendary champion in like arena that had the ability of, and we, we were on like equal footing or I was like slightly ahead in the battle and this is the asynchronous online fighting thing where you just kind of get, I don't know, just small bronze medallions or whatever that you can upgrade or gold mm -hmm. medallions or silver medallions to upgrade your town or your settlement. And we, we were really close and I was slightly winning and he, the legendary champion that I was fighting used the ability of health swap. Oh, is this like some change of heart bullshit? I, I don't know. <laughs> it Where was, it his was health so becomes dumb. your health we, and vice versa. Yeah, I was I was winning, and then he was just like, you know what? Fuck it, health swap, and he just had all the health now, and I was like, wait, 
<laughs> you have health swap? And then I just lost. And I was like, I think this is the beginning of my the end of my raid Shadow Legends days. That is some bullshit. This is, this is dumb. <laughs> it's an ability that rewards you for being worse. It's like, oh, I sucked this entire bat. And it wasn't even like strategically used. It's the asynchronous online where you just put your four champions to defend your, I guess, I don't know, defend your status, your ranking. Mm -hmm. And you have to fight them. You, you, you click on that specific fleet or that specific team and be like, oh, I can probably beat them. And nobody's controlling them. They're just kind of like auto playing. And I usually just auto play too. I don't go into it and be like, oh, you... You use flame, I'm going to use Pokemon terms, like Razor Leaf this guy and Vine Whip this guy or like Surf to kill or hit everybody with an AoE move or whatever. But uh, he, he just like eventually used Health Swap. And I was like, this is so lame. <laughs> so I've, I've also quit yeah. that. Uh, you know what's yeah. crazy is that the lawnmower is back. I don't know how big this lawn is, but... <laughs> it's God a damn! How are they still mowing that lawn? One thing, uh, dude. We we talked about. I know we talked about the o O T glitchless race, but I forgot to talk about like the dungeons entirely. Oh, you mean like our tier list? Yeah, we, like Calf legit made a tier list. <laughs> yeah, and he ranked Jabu way higher than I would have. Jabu's good. Eh, I'm, I think I, it's like decent at best. I'm not a big fan of it. I'm I'm a big Forest Temple fan even before this race. This yeah, race I like Forest solidified Temple. it. Yeah, Forest Temple's great. Uh but child dungeons, I would have gone like Dodongos. I think we agreed on that. Or it was me and Iced or something. No, I think that Cap thought Dodongos was bad because it was too easy. Yeah, but it's like child dungeons, I don't know. I Yeah, it's I, supposed to be easy. <laughs> I, I think Dodongo's uh cavern actually nailed it with the aesthetic and everything. Yeah, it's a it's a really cool spooky atmosphere, and it has like the skull in the middle. Yeah, and you just blow up the thing, and you have to figure it all out. That's it's it's the aesthetic is really cool with yep. Dodongo, so it's definitely top two for me. But we all just <laughs> sure like we all put Forest Temple near the top. Calf put uh, uh, Jabu Jabu's belly also near the top. Everybody agreed that. Baronade wasn't a memorable boss though. Like Goma's way more memorable and Dodongo, King Dodongo's more memorable than Baronade, but the temple as a whole. We, we actually all agreed that Baronade is probably the coolest of the bosses, but he's way less memorable because he's just kind of like a spinning thing. Yeah, it's like, what the fuck even is he? Yeah. And, and, and he's like, he's supposed to be what? The, the infection that is... I don't know what he's supposed to be. Is he... An infection of Jabu? Is he? Uh, something like, like that. But like King Dodongo is more like he's the king of this cavern, and then Goma's like the evil that is inside of the Deku tree that's like poisoning him. Right. Wow. I I, I haven't thought about the fact that two of the bosses in Child Dungeons are just like poison. You know. Where it's Wait. like. Well, Goma's killing the Deku tree, and then Jabu Jabu is, like, being turned evil, or, like... Wait, how is Goma, is, like, poison? Well, he... They ultimately... He ultimately... Or she ultimately kills the Deku tree, right? Oh, does she? Or something? No, like, you she, her, he was though. destined to die... He was destined to die from the beginning. Right. But he was just proving himself... Like, Link was just sharpening his blade <laughs> by fighting Goma... Like, it would have happened either way. And then... But he got some practice. King Dodongo is just some big Dodongo. Yeah, he's just kind of... I Yeah, I, you know what? Thinking thinking about it now, don't really know what the conflicts are. Well, uh, okay, cause... in Dodongo's cavern, they, they want to eat more rocks, but Dodongos are hoarding the rocks or something. But w once you kill King Dodongo, everything's still the same. Yeah, it yeah. I, I, that's just how it is, I guess. <laughs> it's it's not like in Majora's Mask where you you beat Got and I'm going to reference it again even though we talked about Majora's Mask 3. You beat Goat or Got? I, yeah, I think, I think pronounce, it's Goat. Yeah, it's it's Goat, but I used to say Got when I was God. a kid a lot. <laughs> because it's G O A H H T. Dude, the the Mangot. <laughs> I don't <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, okay. when you beat them, like the entire area becomes not winter anymore, but the temple is still the temple, but it doesn't matter because nobody really cares about the temple itself. But if, dude, if Ocarina of Time in 1998 had the had the gall, had the gall to put the effort into like re-entering Dodongo's cavern and all the enemies are gone and now there are Gorons eating rocks. <laughs> Would that be better? Would that be um, good? Wait, you can't even go in there as adult link, can you? Yeah, you can. Oh, you can. Okay. So Yeah. Yeah, that is strange. Hmm. Yeah, because every everything's just still there. Like the key, the fire keys are still there. The the Bemos are still there. Like, everything well, okay, evil is still there. One thing that does change about Death Mountain in general is those falling rocks aren't there anymore as an adult, I think. Yes. Right? I think so. I think you're right. I can't quite remember, but I think that's true. I'm pretty sure you're right. So the falling rocks are gone. Other than that, it's pretty similar, though. Yeah. I don't know. Everything's just poison, I guess. And then you killed King Dodongo, and then they're just like, "Oh, thanks, man. Here's a Gor or here's the Goron here's some Goron spice. Here's the, yeah, here's the Goron spice. Go <laughs> on with your journey. The Goron then, spice stone. And then they walk back into the the cavern and go like, "There's still fucking Beemos everywhere. What the fuck is this shit? Yeah, you know? well, well, we'll just we'll eat the rocks not near the Beemos. Link <laughs> yeah. <we'll> just <laughs> Just like, okay, you guys hang out over there, spin on your little platform there. We won't walk within range. We'll just eat the rocks over here. But hey, at least King Dodongo's gone. So that's something, I guess. But the the thing about the tier list, well, we might not know what the, the storyline of some of the dungeons are, whatever, be, Baronade being a weirdo. Everybody agreed that Water Temple was on the lowest tier. And we did talk about a little bit how Water Temple's bad and like, Dark Link's bad and Morph Morph is weird. Well, okay, Dark Link is a really cool concept, just really executed poorly. It's the coolest concept. You, do you agree? <laughs> yeah, no, it, it is the coolest yeah, concept. Yeah, it's a cool concept. It's, <laughs> it's like the 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 one concept they I, I'm not gonna say got right, but well, the okay, one to, concept to be fair, they, it's not like an original concept that was also in Zelda 2, but it's still cool yeah. like in 3D. Yeah, it's it, it's one of the iconic. It's like, oh, you fight Dark Link, you know, and everybody remembers that fight, but nobody remembers actually fighting them. I guess I think, uh, but it's not just about that or anything. I I, I stumbled upon the reasoning mm -hmm. that, like, while we were talking about in our many conversations about the tier lists of dungeons after our OT glitch list, it's it's ironic. And everybody complains about the Iron Boots thing. I don't think the Iron... I think the Iron Boots thing is like the fourth biggest issue with Water Temple. I, I, I never cared about, about the it. Iron Boots switching. I, I just get tired when I'm backtracking so much. It's like, you know, here we gotta open up the menu, put the boots back on. Okay, we gotta go back down there. All right, here we go. Yeah, it, it, just, be, it just makes backtracking back back more of a hassle. That's literally all that it does. So, I mean, Water and Temple was literally backtrack the dungeon. Yeah, it's it just everybody gets so annoyed. It's just like, okay, well, okay, every everything should be fine. I'm just gonna go get this ch this. Uh, the amount of times I went to look for the boss key or get the boss key and forgot that the small key there was a small key required in order to get to the small room that contains the boss key chest is a lot. I always forgot that. Like I needed to go get another chest and with a small key in it in order to get into that room every time. I would have but, to play the Water Temple again to remember why it's so bad. It, I, I think the biggest issue with it, and I think it's very similar to Forest Temple, but Forest Temple handle it, handles it better and there's not as much of it, where Water Temple is just a leveled up, you need seven keys to get into all of these areas. I don't know how many actual keys you need, but it seems you, like, get, you it need seems to like get 20 these keys, many dude. keys. Pardon me? It seems like 20 keys. It's, I, I think somebody said it was 11. Yeah, I, I knew know. it was like around 10, but yeah. But I, I don't know for sure. But you need to backtrack in order to get all these keys. And it's just leveled up where Forest Temple, you actually kind of do have to backtrack. Not a lot, but you, you get up to the top of the floor and you need a key in order to get to the, the spiral hallway. And then you need another key after the spiral hallway uh, to get into the ice, uh, into the ice covered, uh, 
eye that you have to shoot with an arrow. You need a door. You need a key for that one. So you have to go through everything again. If you have Furore's Wind, it makes it a lot easier. But like it, it's that kind of thing with Water Temple. But it's just seven more times. You just like walk up to a door. It's like shit. I need a key. I guess I need to go yeah. back and look for a key. Yeah. All right. Where's that and, one chest I can get to this time? And 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 the keys. The the thing that's a huge issue with Water Temple is that, ironically, it has the least flow. And I, I said that multiple times, and I know it's a joke that I, that Trey's heard Get it, a few water times flows, in these conversations. There's no flow, yo. Yeah, it's. Yeah, I I know Trey's heard it a bunch of times, but it's it's clever enough that I have to repeat it six times. So clever. And it, out of all the dungeons, it's like. All, all of the keys are just kind of randomly placed. It's like, here's a key, here's a key, here's a key. There's no reason to go over here except for there's a key. And you just have to know where they all are. If, you've, if you know where they are, it's not that much of an issue. And it could be debatably fun, maybe, doing all these things. But as somebody playing through the game, with Forest Temple... You can just kind of enter the side areas and go like, oh, here's a chest. You know, it's not necessarily directly tied to where you're ending up, where, where you need to end up within the forest temple. But it's in like, there's two chests in the side rooms that you can explore. Whereas Water Temple is the next level up where uh, there aren't four ghosts that you have to kill, but there are... 17 keys that you have to just get randomly and then <laughs> that contribute to this one direct like linear pathway that you have to go through in the dungeon so it's it's done actually dude, water, I, just water I just realized that like at least forest fire and water temple all have that same trope where the boss keys like it's right here like at the very front here's the boss room um but you gotta like go all around to like actually get the boss key which is kind of... Wait, does Shadow do that too? I don't remember. No, Shadow's... Oh, dude, Shadow's like way, way out, end. yeah. Yeah. And Spirit doesn't do that. Like, Spirit, you don't... It, as a casual... Spirit's probably the cool... They handle the boss key the coolest way out of any of them, where it's just like, oh, probably casual players... Uh, probably casual players don't even figure it out, where you stand on that platform in front of the face and you're just like... What am I supposed to do? And then you just mirror shield the face and it crumbles. Yeah. And that's kind of sick. I think Shadow is one of my favorites because it's just like so weird. Dude. And I like the atmosphere as well. Dude, I, I Shadow is pretty cool. I like Shadow. I, I like Fire and, uh, and Forest a lot. <clears throat> I think everyone likes Forest just because it, it has cool music, I think. Yeah. And... I always remember like that that one small key right when you walk in, like that first room. Yeah, gotta get that, and then see. <laughs> I thought Calf was gonna be stuck on that key forever. I don't know if he got it fast, but I I thought he was gonna be stuck on it for a lot of it. Yeah, it's he's just not gonna know it's here. But maybe he did. I don't know. <clears throat> Has like the cool spiral room mechanic. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah the. the the chest in the first room contributes to my like argument that it's kind of a lower level water temple where it's just like, here's a chest up on this, this tree at the, in the first room that you might require a, a, a compass in order to know that it's actually here and then yeah. come back and get it. But I don't know people, people it's, it's, I don't know. It's a lot less troublesome to traverse, and I think that's the biggest issue with uh, Water Temple when you have to backtrack every everywhere. Like I get the the Iron Boots troubles that everybody has with the backtracking. Just like oh, I have to backtrack and I have to do all this shit, Ugh. and I have to do it however many times for however many keys. Anyway, I just wanted to yeah, talk I'm really about glad that like future point. games, starting with the Wind Waker, you can just unequip and reequip Iron Boots whenever you want. I don't know. The more, the more I talk about it, the more I agree with the... <laughs> like, I started this whole conversation being like, yeah, the Iron Boots thing, I don't understand why people hate that so much, blah, blah, blah. And then by the end of the conversation, I'm like, yeah, fuck that. You're right. <laughs> no, by the end, you're like, <laughs> understood. Understood, man. Uh, <laughs> as uh, General Mike would say. As, as General Mike would say. Um, but yeah, as far as... 
don't know how to transition to this. Similar to Breath <laughs> of the Wild in open world gaming, I've began my quest in a fairly open world RPG game myself. Cool. <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> I just, no one cares. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm genuinely <laughs> yeah. interested. And uh, so for the first time ever, I'm playing Xenoblade. Uh, the Definitive Edition came out on Switch. Uh, the, the first game came out like many years ago. Given that Shulk is in Smash 4, it's at least a few years old. Yeah. Um, so I was like, yeah, this game's coming out. I was a big fan of Fire Emblem, which had the anime art style. So I'm not opposed to the anime art style anymore in video games. So I was like, you know what? Let's try it out. I like, I like games where they throw <laughs> a bunch of numbers at you and you just sort of optimize those numbers in a way that works out for you. Were you opposed to the anime art style beforehand? Not entirely, but it was sort of a bit of a turnoff. I was like, I don't know, man. I feel like kind of a weep for playing this. <laughs> but I was a weirdo for now sure. Nowadays, I totally get it. Uh, totally yeah, respect it. Right in. And I really like the voice acting so far. It's like <laughs> the way that everyone talks, it's so great. There's like, hey, what's up, Ryan? I'm here to fight with you. <laughs> <laughs> I need to figure out how the Monado works. Like, it's just so great. The Monado. It, it's like, there's already so much character, like in the first. I don't know, 10 hours I've been playing it so far. Are you, you're that far in? Uh, maybe not 10 hours. At least 8 hours over well, 3 play sessions, I'd say. A lot more than I thought you would be. I mean, it came out a few days ago. It's not true. Not too crazy. Um, not too crazy, dude. Yeah, the, as with any game like this, dude, there are so many mechanics. Like, every step you take is like, here's a new mechanic and tutorial for it. Learn it. <laughs> And Learn it, here you go. It, like, there's, like, there's like a million things at once, but, you know, you slowly put it together, much like I did with Three Houses, which is a totally different game. You know, Fire Emblem, it's grid-based, turn-based strategy, whereas Xenoblade is like uh, a more modern-style RPG where it's all in real time, and you do attacks at, like, time is like a factor, and you can't just, like, take forever. <laughs> and... Yeah, there's like there's like gym crafting, there's affinity with different characters, like affinity within your partner as well as NPCs. There's the list just goes on for like an eternity. Um yeah. but it's it's pretty fun so far. I I like where the story is going off, starting off. Uh the characterization feels real and it's like the, the, the if the characters feel good off the get-go, it's a pretty good sign. So I'm definitely looking forward to playing more of it. But that's, that's my main casual gaming thing going on. I'll get more updates as I go on, uh, as I figure out the game a little bit more. But I'm still doing my show-off grind in SSX Tricky. I've been learning Elysium Alps. Probably going to do my first attempts of Elysium Alps tomorrow on stream, which is Sunday on this recording. And it's probably not going to go too well. It's a much longer track than Snow Dream. So there's much more to learn. But it'll be fun to just sort of do like some bullshit attempts, see what score I can get immediately, and then improve from there, essentially. Um, mm -hmm. But actually, so I'm not going to get into it this time, but in the future, when we, <laughs> when we unlock more information regarding it, I will likely oh. cover it more. <laughs> but all I'm going to say is there's been some drama in the tricky community. Yeah. Um... <laughs> For now, I'm going to keep it private, but it's pretty good, so that's all I'm going to say for now. In the, in the, before the podcast, Trey was just like, yeah, I want to, I want to keep it public. And I mean like, private, I mean private. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, what did I say? And I'm like, you, you said keep it public, but I understood, understood what you meant. I do that with unlisted as well. I'm like, yeah, keep, I'm going to keep, I'm going to unlist the video. So you're going to have it unlisted? <laughs> no, I, I mean, make it public. <laughs> Did did you so how, where did you get to in Snow Dream? <clears throat> oh, so in Snow Dream, I I barely passed the two million threshold, which is a pretty good okay. starting threshold. It's uh not as hard to get two million Snow Dream as say three million Garibaldi, I'd say, mm -hmm. but it's a good starting point, and I think I eventually want to work closer to two point five million. I just have to figure out my strats a little better in the middle section, which is much harder than the previous, or like the early and late sections of that track. 
Um, but yeah, my, my ultimately, I hope that my streams get at least a few more players into the game. I know that Tricky has sort of like a... I don't want to say cult following, because it's actually like a relatively big following. It, it's a decently popular series, SSX Games. Um, so it's cool whenever I'm streaming it, I see a few chatters be like, Oh, I love this game growing up. Or like, yo, that... I remember getting this score when I was going to show off myself. Um, but I'm hoping that my streams will inspire some other players or uh, people who aren't players to become players and go for some scores themselves and uh, maybe fletch out that community because it's a pretty small... Okay, just to give like a, <laughs> a brief hint <laughs> as to what the whole drama was, let's just say the community is a little smaller than we thought it was. Oh. Which might give it away, but yeah. If you want to know more about that juicy drama, um, Kellicat, who's the another top-level player of the game, like, much better than me, Kellicat and I have been digging up some dirt, and uh, it's, it's some juicy stuff, let me tell you, boys. Oh. It's also kind of saddening, though, because it uh, involves a long-time friend of mine, but more on that later. I'm I'm just trying to think of what it could be it's, with that hint. It's pretty mind boggling. That's all. It's yeah. It like R Y Goose would make a video on this in a heartbeat if it was a more popular game. Like, my oh friends, my it just keeps happening. <laughs> this community is whatever the fuck you would say. I don't know. <laughs> this this this, de this community is definitely whatever the fuck. It's it's whatever sure. the fuck, dude. It it makes me kind of sad because I love Tricky so much. And I kind of wish it had a more established and a little more thriving community behind speedrunning it. Um, we can always hope that maybe someday it'll get to that point, but we'll see. I, I See, I, I would just wish it was more concrete. You know? Yeah, tricky. It's just <laughs> such a history of cheaters and just, ugh, it's, it's pretty gross. Well, it's like what we were talking about with the random guy that, or the guy that raided you. I, I I can't remember his name, and he was also an SSX player. It's just oh, you have um, to put that the was, addendum. That was Daggy Boy. You you have to put the addendum when you're talking about world records in SSX. It's just like uh, we think that the record is this because <laughs> there has been a a deep history of tassers saying that their run was legitimate. <laughs> yeah, and I was actually VCing with Kellicat earlier today when we were like talking about all the drama. And he feels kind of worried about his own times because I'm pretty damn sure he's legit, but he does play on emulator. And so he does task the game as well as run it. So he's like, people are going to look at me and be like, hmm, well, this top level player, he knows how to task stuff. And he just so happens to have these insane RTA times on emulator. Hmm. <laughs> but I wouldn't worry about it too much if I were him. I, I trust him. Uh, much more than some other people. <laughs> oh my god! It's just like it would suck. It would suck so hard if, like, in Sunshine, if Ramel was just uh, the tip of the iceberg when it came to people lying yeah. about times, and you just like, yeah, like, sure, the record's fourteen oh four by guy, but you, uh, it's not le like it, it, he's a known cheater. Like it would be so shitty to have to go through the rigmarole of being like, yeah, we don't actually know what the best time is or the best score is or whatever. Every single time that question was brought up. And sometimes you would never know that the top level player was cheating unless they came out themselves, like from a guilty conscience or whatever. Like, yeah, I was cheating guys. I'm, I'm sorry. But like they could have, gotten away with it forever so it's just kind of crazy to think about yeah it's it's, it's kind of nuts you always got to be wary of possible cheaters in games <laughs> it's just it's unfortunate that tricky like half the players play on emulator that's just how it is like it and it's so easy to cheat on emulator too and actually that I brings me to another point so in the all races category which is not as popular as doing actual il attempts because it's more of an il based game it's it's sort of like um well, I'd say it's more serious than All Cup Tour and Double Dash because All Cup Tour is just blue shell hell. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas All Races, it's almost no RNG at all aside from if you're doing race mode as opposed to time trial mode. And it sort of depends on uh, like your knockdown RNG to fill up your boost meter. Yeah. But aside from that, it's pretty much no RNG at all. It's, it's a pretty, pretty sound category. 
But we were thinking about um, changing the ruling of the timing for that category from RTA to adding up the in-game time you get for each track back-to-back. Because there's such a discrepancy in load times, like the PlayStation 2 emulator load times overall save like 10 seconds on my console GameCube runs. So stuff like that, it's kind of like, also not to mention PlayStation 2 console times are just abysmal. And the game is by far most popular on PS2 because the PS2 sold like a million bajillion units. It did sell, a mid, I'm looking at the stats right now, a million bajillion. A million bajillion, so. a.k.a. over 100 million. And so it just kind of sucks. Any PlayStation 2 runner just is totally fucked as far as load times go. So we're highly considering changing the ruling there. We're going to just have it. Because Live Split has a feature where you can type in manual splits for each split. Mm-hmm. And because there's that load time between each track, you can like do a track type in your in-game time during the next load time, just go right in again. And also, it wouldn't factor in menuing anymore. It would just be the straight-up times you get. No loads, no menuing, just the times back-to-back. So that's probably going to happen at some point. Cool. We're just trying to, you know, me and Kelly Cat, we're trying to figure our shit out with Tricky Community, <laughs> see what's going on with it. You're, you're trying to save SSX Tricky. I need to save Tricky. You know, it's a it needs to be a more respected game. And the first way to do that is to make sure that the... Uh, it's not full of cheaters, which it kind of already was, but <laughs> yeah, well, we're, we're cleaning it up one step at a time. So yeah, that's tricky, and Xenoblade. Uh, I don't have much to say on Xenoblade because I just started playing it, but my, my, I guess my final thought is that it's, it's a lot to take in, but on that same point, it's uh, not much to think about because like, the combat is mostly brain dead, especially against like, weaker enemies. But yeah. there is like a lot of depth to it when you fight some tougher enemies to like survive. Uh, but I'm figuring it out. So that's my Xenoblade Tricky update. <laughs> Xenoblade <laughs> Tricky. You know, two pretty similar games, of course. Obviously. Uh, casually, I'm pretty sure I've, I've already covered everything I played. Like I did the OT race. Uh, I've been playing Tetris every now and then. Breath of the Wild. I don't know. Past that, I haven't really been doing much. Game wise, mostly yep. this past week, I've been jumping into a couple of television shows. Ooh. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm not really a television guy. I should. I, I, I was talking to Mello. I was tell. What? Pardon me. I definitely am not a television guy. I, I used to be a television guy though. So, uh, I was talking to Mello earlier today, and I, I probably will jump into Breaking Bad. Yes. Back into Breaking Bad because I just, I just. I, I just get to the Jesse Pinkman part where he's rocking in front of the... Uh, he has, like, the huge the, stereo thing. Yeah, in front of the speaker, and I'm just like, yeah. Dude, but push I, past I just that haven't part, gone back to trust it. Trust me, season four is, like, my favorite season. So Yeah. It's pretty dope. So, so I, I need to do that, but to the past few days, I've actually been watching uh, a show from 2008, or that started in 2008, that I w- used to watch... I, I say when I, I would say when I was a kid, but I think it came out when I was like 16, I guess. And uh, it's called Castle. And it's like one of those crime dramas that was on ABC back in the day. And I watched the first season of it, the entirety of the first season, but it was only 10 episodes. And it's actually pretty good. Like I, I, I watched the first few seasons when I was a kid. Or again, I say when I was a kid, but I was 16. And I, I didn't remember it being a amazing or anything like that i i didn't really remember a lot about it i just remembered nathan fillion was in it and uh it, it's pretty funny so like the the reason i'm bringing it up i watched the first season of it and i think it's a pretty cohesive story to an extent even though it's a crime drama on abc from a decade and a half ago but the, the funniest part of it is i've actually th- there's a meme youtube video on it if you like search Tele- like uh, hacking in television shows and it, it's just kind of like a meme YouTube video from the the 8th season of Castle it's just like this caricature of what hacking is or what television audiences would understand hacking to be and it's just these fancy icons <laughs> and the, like backslash counter hack just people like sitting some, at a computer like treating shit. it kind of like a computer game kind of a thing and just going back and forth, and it's this caricature of itself. 
and it's really I never got that far in Castle. And I, I like the foundation, the, the idea of what Castle is. Like, it, uh, it's a, a novelist. Uh, Nathan Fillion plays a novelist who follows around Kate Beckett, who's a detective, and just helps her solve murders as a best-selling crime or f- fic- fictional crime novelist. That's what he is. And it's, yep. it's really... The first season's really good. I, I think it's really good. And... What's really funny about like me referring to the YouTube video from season eight that has, I don't know, probably like 5 million views or whatever. And it's just this caricature of hacking within the first three episodes. There's a lot of references to like how down to earth the, their modality of catching criminals are. And like one of the first episodes that, they sit down and go like, well, we have to do a, a, a face match from a camera or like finger fingerprint match, whoever the fuck, and go through all these files. And they sit at this large table and they throw all their files on the table and they start opening them up, all four of them. And it's just like, yeah, it's not as glamorous as you think, Castle. It's This is what real police work is kind of a thing. <laughs> and it's all down to earth. And they're just referring to how down to earth their m- method of catching criminals is. And then... Like I haven't seen a lot of the in between, but then seven seasons later, se- seasons later, they pull a one hundred and eighty, and it's just like, well, here's this caricature of like solving crimes. Here, here's us hacking and slash counter hacking, <laughs> and all these fancy icons on the screen. So I, I don't even think season eight is on Amazon Prime, but I'm not really looking forward to getting there. So I'm I, I don't really want to, <laughs> but it is really funny to watch the entirety of the first season be like, actually, this is kind of well done. It's fairly down to earth. And then this YouTube video that I watched a few times, actually I watched it like a few days ago just to refresh my memory on it. And it's just like this caricature of what, I don't know, solving crime is. No, that's real hacking. That's how it goes. They just, they just totally lose their foundation of what they made. (laughs) It's just like, it's not like the books castle. It's like, well, Seven seasons later, maybe. <laughs> but yeah, that's interesting. Kind of all I have. I've never heard of that show because I was, I'm not much of a show junkie. But so you're, you're gonna keep watching it after season one? I, yeah, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna keep watching it. It's it's just like the freak of the week, like crime drama shows from a decade ago. Yeah, it's if you've ever heard of Firefly, have you heard of Firefly? I haven't. You haven't? Okay, so like. I don't know. Nathan Fillion got big off of Firefly and it was canceled off of Fox, whatever. And he's, he's a great actor. I don't know. My, my, uh, my sister was a huge fan of his. So I don't know. It's, it's just like weird to go back to a, a show that I actually watched for the first few seasons a dozen years ago, but I don't know. Yep. Kind of interesting. <clears throat> uh, other than that, I've been getting back in the death note, I guess I watched like two episodes today. <laughs> I don't nice. know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I guess at the end of this podcast, I'm just talking about shows that I watched. <laughs> that's fair. That's the. That's it. I guess. I guess that's our week in gaming. Yeah, uh, it's uh, it's a lot of stuff on the back burner, but we're figuring out the best ways to utilize our free time for gaming. Woo! Yeah. I, uh, what's funny about the the glitchless runs, and I, I was I was. Like we talked about it obviously in the, earlier in the cast. I think this might be the only way that I could possibly find another speed game to run. You know? Yeah, just you gotta doing... just like sort of go in. Oh, do you think like doing a blind race versus a casual runs even better? Maybe. Possibly. Like, or I guess maybe so we should. Maybe not blind race, but like a semi blind race of a game you already played. Yeah. Actually, I, I, I think that might be because I, I have no motivation to play sunshine lately like i could maybe pop in a few runs this month but i don't know maybe maybe there'll be a game we run into every or uh while we're doing this where i'm just like you know what maybe i'll invest some time into maybe learning this run dude funnily enough that's how i picked up tupac yeah because that started with the blind race semi blind race with j buzzy b and then it led me into the rabbit hole of huh well who actually runs this game maybe i'll try it out yeah. So well, it, it can work. 
Yeah, since we're doing the rematch of the the OOT race, I was actually thinking about like like what if after we do this OOT rematch, I'm like maybe I'll try to learn glitchless. Hmm, that'd be kind of interesting. You, think you would like, like glitchless more than weeks. glitchful. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't see myself becoming uh, an OOT super glitcher like figure like it Zelda all out. Like a Zelda free glitcher. Yeah, I don't. I don't see it, but who knows. Maybe, maybe it'll happen. I yeah, so. I just feel like... I know it's never too late, but I feel like as far as my... Because, like, my honeymoon... Our honeymoon phase of speedrunning is well past at this point. Yeah. I feel like we sort of missed the mark on being early enough to, like, pick up a Zelda game and actually dedicate a lot of time to it. Yeah. It just, it just seems like a lost cause at this point. Like any Zelda game. <laughs> but, like, doing a glitchless race just for fun, that's, that's always dope. Yeah, I, I, I think these are actually... I, I don't know who thought of them, but I, I think these are actually going to be really fun if we do yeah, a Yeah, I need them. to, at some point in the next month, go back home again, pick up a number of my games, like Twilight Princess and Wind Waker, and then see if we can race those. Do you have Galaxy or Galaxy I 2? I do have Galaxy at my house as well. You want to... No, you, not really. <laughs> you don't want to race Galaxy? I mean, you played that recently. You have a huge advantage on me. Well, you can do a casual playthrough of it as well if you want, and then we. Can I don't really do want to though. <laughs> I'm more in the mood for like Zelda and stuff. Okay. Oh, I don't know because I I knew that the only reason I asked you is because I know Calf and Quan would definitely not want to do a Galaxy. Also, run. I was thinking of like maybe like Metroid Prime or something. Ooh, I don't have the first one. Neither do I. I only I only ever owned two and three. I I own Echoes. We can do that. We could do Echoes. That sounds fun. When's the last time you played Echoes? Oh, fucking, I don't know, man. Dude, so I never beat the ago. final boss in Echoes. <laughs> I literally okay. got to there, lost to it, and was like, no, I'll come back to it later. Never did. I, I don't know why. I think I 100%ed Echoes, but I never replayed it. You 100%ed it? Yeah, I got like all the, I don't even know what they're called. I don't know what the collectibles are called Missile in that game. Missile expansion, energy tank, um... No, the well, sure, the missile expansion and stuff, but like the lore stuff, the uh, oh, like you scanned everything, yeah, the scan stuff, dude. That is insane. I always wanted to do that, but I never got even close. <laughs> See, I, I, I like that nowadays you actually trust me when I say, like, I'm not saying I'm do, lying, but with your core oxide hunting and the fact that you got 120 shines pretty much with no help, I, I can believe it now. I was never, I wasn't anywhere near as patient or diligent as you as a kid. That's all. So, I don't know. That's, you're welcome <laughs> for that compliment. But. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. It, it, it was so many years of you being like, did you really get the 120 shot? I'm like, know. I, I swear think... I didn't cheat. Dude, I was just like super dumb playing games growing up. That's that's where all of my like patience for looking for Korok seeds come from, where I like spray random bookcases to get blue coins. Like I'm willing to walk around everywhere in, in Breath of the Wild multiple times to look for one rock to pick up. Dude, you, know? you would love Xenoblade because there's like a million things around you at all times to do. I don't know. I don't know. There's like a million little side quests to do. It's like, defeat these enemies over here. Okay, I did it. All right, give me this <laughs> item. All right, got it. <laughs> no, but I hate the... I hate that... I hate the Goron Spice stuff. Well, Xenoblade has quite a bit of Goron Spice stuff, but they, they do it pretty well. Like, they show you, here's where it is. You can warp close to there on the map. Do it. <laughs> I don't know. I, mean, I gotta play the game more to like fully understand it. But we're probably gonna wrap it up here. It's been a long yeah. time. Yeah. Thanks for listening, everyone. I, if you enjoy this new layout, if you're still listening, let me know what you think of it. Um, I'm sure it's better than like a static image, no matter what. So you're probably gonna say, "I like it." <laughs> Poggers. But yeah, we're on Spotify and Google Play. If you just prefer audio with no Sid being bad at Water Temple. No. Nope. And <laughs> well, still better than Cafalon. I'll give you that. Oh yeah, dude. I, I was I was bad at Water Temple, but I was still the best out of all three of us. <laughs> yeah, so. you were like twice as good as Cafalon. Yeah, but yeah, uh, have a good night or day, everyone. What?